Well, howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome to the Galloping Goat Show. I'm your host, Cowboy Max. And on my show, my goats and I travel around the community to find the goats in our area. I don't mean the bad type of goats. I mean the G-O-A-T's, the greatest of all time. Now, these are the people that are out right here in our backyard that are doing great and amazing things. And part of those goats out there are small business owners and the folks that are out there working and grinding every day. Our small business world helps to drive our local economy, so I do consider those folks the goats. And I've got one of them on today. It's Andrew Burr with the Village Mercantile. Andrew, how's it going? Very well. How about you, Max? Oh, man, I'm doing all right. I, uh, I you know, not, not getting out very much, but uh, uh, I'm living vicariously through social media and seeing everything everybody's doing, and it looks like y'all are, y'all are busy. We are busy. We are very blessed, very grateful, uh, uh, and, and, and essential, if you will say, but uh, all small businesses are essential, but we're lucky to be open. Yeah, and I look like, uh, you know, it was very interesting in the, in the very beginning of this pandemic shutdown, if you will, uh, of what was going to be considered an essential business and what's not, and that's still kind of a little bit odd and up in the air, but uh, uh, I'm assuming uh, for those folks that are out there that don't quite understand the guidelines of what is considered essential, you're providing food for animals, and that's is that what the thing is? That that's correct. You know, we're we are deemed on the agricultural side of the world essential for uh, livestock, farms, ranches, those type of uh, operations to keep them going so that the supply chain doesn't end. So, I mean, it really all revolves around food production. Everything, uh, you know, out there, with, uh, the, the agricultural world, which we know, uh, is all about the f food production. And uh, so, would, would seem to be that's a very essential part of our, of our life, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's the root of all, all of us. Can you t give me a rundown for those folks that don't know the Village Working Pal? Tell me, tell me what it is. So the village mercantile, if uh, you know, mercantile is an old, old name, an old, old word, but uh, it's an essential, a little bit of uh, nothing and a whole lot of something. So we, 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 we carry a lot of different products, uh, of course, farm and ranch items, things that you can use around your house, around the farm, around the ranch, uh, pet food, livestock feed, hay, uh, grass, hay, alfalfa, just, you know, just about anything that you would want and need that uh, you do for your for your small operation or even for your backyard. And you said that, which I think is really neat. The word mercantile, I think, is just it kind of spurs this uh, historical feeling and in, 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 inside of people. And, and when I think about it, like you said, back in the whatever early times, old times, whatever we want to <laughs> say, you know, it wasn't uh, the mercantile was kind of the place, the one-stop shop for everything, right? Yeah, I mean, you used to get your canned goods, your 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 linens, your you know, oil for your lamps. I mean, if you go back that far, the grease for your uh, grease for your wagon, I guess, is what I you right. could get it as a mercantile. So, well, um, tell me, how did you get into this deal? I mean, this it's a, it's an amazing store. It's an amazing uh, place to go for so, someone like me, but I think for you, like you said, you have so many different products that uh, if you have any interest in the agricultural world or, or gardening or, or even, uh, uh, you know, if you're a handyman or doing DIY projects around the house, it's a great store to go into because it's a lot of fun. But how did you get into all of this? Well, I came out of uh, NMSU as a frustrated uh, vet student that couldn't get into vet school. And <laughs> I've, been in, I've, I've been in the ag world all my life and uh, the opportunity of a, of a operation opened up here now 29 years ago and I went to my dad and I begged my about a thousand dollars from him and I said help me start this business and he gave me a thousand dollars and said go for it don't ask for any more wow and so never looked back, nine so. years ago yeah we're has celebrating it, our 29th year this year has it always been the village mercantile yeah always been we started where the old where the new quilt shop is we were there for 13 years uh I built this building 15 years ago, so wow. right, uh, 28, 29 years. And you're in you're in Corrales, right? We are in Corrales, yeah. And just a 
you're the, there's only one there's only one of you you don't have several shops around town well, I, I i wanted to, to do my best for the community and i don't think i could do any more than one but uh, this, <laughs> takes, this takes enough time this takes enough time you got uh, it all we, you can yeah we you know we employ 22 people here wow that's fantastic that's one of the things that uh i think we we miss as a as just a general public as we wander around and we we visit different businesses is uh uh, the, the back end side of it, behind the scenes of the employment that goes on out there, you know, our small businesses employ a lot of people. Well, you remember, small business is, what do they say, 90% of the employment of the, of the country. Right. Uh, local business, uh, 70 to 80% of the money stays in the community when you're a small business versus a large corporate. So, uh, and it empowers it empowers your employees in this community. You know, they can go out and then go to the local restaurants. They can, you know, they use their money to buy that local house or to buy that local fuel or, you know, that type of thing. They so really do, uh, it really does fuel our local economy. And our, yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's the backbone of it, I, I, I know for sure. You know, springtime, I know for you is, is, is maybe, is springtime your busiest time of the year? Uh, you know, it stays steady throughout the year for us but spring does spring if you will you know we have baby chicks uh come in and that's one aspect that uh, is crazy this year and of course uh, the you know the, the vegetable starts and those things and people wanting to get out and and kind of go back to that uh, homesteading uh yeah. philosophy which a lot of people have over the years i mean we see it peak and valley um sorry about that but uh peak and valley uh over the years but yeah spring spring is fun i mean that we we are grateful when february leaves and march arrives there you go yeah absolutely for a lot of reasons the uh the whole chick thing has been intriguing me i've been kind of paying attention to it on a national scale and uh are you seeing the purchase of, of baby chicks uh, as something that's spiked uh because of what's going on well you know we'll see that hit about every three years Okay. And this was probably the third year, unbeknownst to us. We probably figured uh, next year would have been been the peak, really. But this year, it, uh, it it really cranked this year. And I think it goes back to people being wanting to know where their food source comes from, uh, having some security. Uh, of course, the kids, a lot of kids were out of school for a lot of months, a lot of weeks, I guess I should say, a lot of weeks. And uh, uh, so they needed something for those kids to do great projects for kids and adults alike. But yeah, it, uh, uh, we, we put all of our orders in, in December and I tell you, every bird that we could have bought this year, we could have sold. <laughs> well, I know, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I'm always trying to look for the silver lining with, with anything that might be considered bad and, and, you know, a lot of bad things about what's going on right now, but, but, uh, from, uh, from a food producer, uh, agricultural um, fan uh, that, like me that I am, I think a lot of the silver lining, especially from a local standpoint of, of uh, folks that are trying to grow their own food, produce their own food, or produce food for their local economy, this, this thing, this pandemic, and the, the concern and the threat to the overall food system I think has opened a lot of people's eyes to say, hey, you know, maybe I ought to take a little bit deeper and harder look at, at where my food comes from, how, how food is produced, and, and uh, you know, can I do some of it on my own? Right. No, I think that's a big part. I think that's a big part of it. You know, we've seen beekeeping, you know, people wanting to get out, and of course, that's a total different uh, situation, but they just want to, you see them wanting to get back into nature, to get back into the world where they can, because unfortunately we have forgotten about that. A lot yeah, of us well, have, you know, you know, we are blessed to be able to have the convenience that we do. I mean, it's, uh, right. it's, you know, our country is amazing in that regard. And, and uh, to be able to be fortunate, uh, both economic, economically, financially, supply wise, all of those things, uh, you know, it, it does lend itself to, that distancing where they, you know, we talk about uh, being separated from, uh, from where our food comes from and understanding that. Um, so, you know, uh, like I said, silver lining, maybe, maybe coming out of this, there'll be a little bit more emphasis on, on local food production and, and uh, folks like us. That's a, that's a good thing. It is a good thing. No, I think uh, uh, if you know where it comes from, uh, uh, you're much more appreciative of it and uh, you enjoy it more. 
you bet. I'm grateful for. So. Tell me about, in, within your business, you started this 29 years ago, um, and uh, is it uh, on a day-to-day basis? I know the grind. there's a grind that goes on every day uh, being a, a business owner, trying to make things happen. And, and uh, But do you, have a, do you have a joy for what you do? I still love it. I still love it. I wake up every morning. There's mornings that I would like to sleep a little longer <laughs> just because I'm getting a little older. But uh, no, I do. I, because every morning, uh, it, it, the decisions I make are the decisions that will either make me or break me. So that that is the cool thing about it. I, I, I do enjoy it still. So the aspect um, of being kind of in control of your own destiny, is that one of the things that really draws you to it every day? Yeah, every day. Yeah. It does. I, you know, it, 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 again, uh, like I said, or yeah, like I said, if, if I mess it up, I'm the one that gets to, it's only on you. You're the only person it's only on me. Yeah, exactly. That's for sure. That's for sure. I, what else, is there something in particular, like on a day to day basis that you're in there that you see with either your customers or your, your, your staff and employees? Um, is there, is there anything that you see on a daily basis that would, that kind of really makes you smile beyond just the, the idea of, of, of your own business ownership, uh, something that you see that uh, kind of gives you joy with, with what's going on. Well, I think I was put on this earth to serve. And I think my, my, my employees have learned from me that that's what we're here to do is to serve our human, you know, our human man, if you will. Uh, but to take a, a kid that has no ability to work or has never learned to work and to help mentor him and teach him to work. And, you know, 10 years later, he's still working for you and then goes off and starts his own career. Those are, those are the things that make my day. Uh, Taking somebody that might know a lot about plants or dog food or whatever and teaching them about plants or dog food and, and watching them interact with customers and, and, it's it's a forever day learning process for them and to watch them grow in things that they're uncomfortable with. It's pretty cool. You know, that's an excitement. Human, human growth and development is, uh, you know, that spans everything, but it's a, that's, that's a very rewarding thing to be part of. I I know that for sure. Tell me, uh, you've done a great job of that over the years. (laughs) Well, uh, that's right. Like you said, there's, there's some days where you go, Oh boy, what am I, what did I get myself into? But, uh, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I've been following you for a long time and the things that y'all do, and, and you just hit on it a little bit about uh, human development and personal development. But you, you go, you take a step a little bit beyond just uh, providing products and and supplies to people, but you you do a lot of education out of the mercantile. Can you tell me about the, your educational seminars and things like that? So of course we, you know, again, we want everybody that walks through the door to be able to touch them and, and educate them on, you know, a problem or an issue that they have. And uh, so that over the years has made us reach out into the community more so that we can get more people concentrated in a, 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 a timely fashion to, you know, we have horses and hot dogs that we do several series throughout the, uh, the summer months. Uh, uh, we just finished one up on Zoom, which was a little interesting, but uh, uh, had about a, had about 100 people on Zoom. We're going to change the platform a little bit on the next one because uh, that didn't work real well, but it, it was good. <laughs> Learning curves, right? You bet. And of course, gardening center, uh, gardening seminars. Uh, we, we try to do three or four throughout the season. So, you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts in this store. So we try to we try to grab a hold of each different mac, mac, micro department, if you will, and uh, and uh, get people interested and educated and bring some pretty high powered people in that know more than I do. And uh, it's a it's a win win for everybody. I think it really is. You, you know, it's a very valuable thing for, for those of us out here that are searching for knowledge to be able to have access to that on a, you know, on a familiar local basis is, it, it, I think sometimes it's, we're more comfortable if um, we can touch and feel and it's, it's kind of, again, well, I keep saying local, but if it comes into our local environment, I, I think it helps to, to um, impact us a little bit more. And it does. And I think what we do is we, we help set people up to, 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 to go find more knowledge, to go find more of what they're looking for. Because I mean, 
I ask my kids when, when we're at home working uh, about something and they say, well, Google says, and it's, eh, it's not so much Google. That's, this is really the real world. So <laughs> right. there, there are different sources of information for you to go, uh, to go find it and to, to understand it and learn it. So well, make you, your own decisions. So. You've mentioned that you've done some of these Zoom, now some of these educational seminars you, you're, you're doing online and uh, doing them through the conferencing uh, calls with the Zoom and that type of deal. Do you see that there's an opportunity now as you, as we one day leave this, this, this situation of being quarantined, if you will, uh, to where that becomes a normal part of your business where maybe you can expand on your educational side of things by still doing some of that in, in a personal in-house type deal, but also doing uh, online as well? Yeah, I think that they're going to go hand in hand. You know, and I think we might, you know, if we do a good job on the digital side of it, that we'll reach more people, yeah. uh, you know, and that could be a whole, whole new uh, business stream, if you will. So, you know, it, uh, it, it, it's not out of the question. Again, silver linings, right? Somehow That's right. Silver, exactly. Force us into being a little bit more tech, tech savvy. How about that? Exactly. What, uh, uh, if people are trying to find, if, if, if people have never been to the Mercantile, can you tell us where you are and then maybe tell, tell everybody how they can find you online. Okay. So if you are coming from Albuquerque, we're actually in the village of Corrales, which is just, a, we're kind of squished between Rio Rancho here down in the river between Albuquerque and Rio Rancho. Uh, we're a mile and a half in from uh, the corner of 528 and Alameda. Just come due north. We're the first large building that you come to when you come into the village of Corrales. Um, pretty easy to find. Uh, open seven days a week, uh, 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. Sundays, 10 to 5. Um, we've got a great website. Talk about a, something that's grown in leaps and bounds as well during this. It's uh, www.thevillagemercantile.com. The has to be in front of it, so uh, okay. that's, uh, village mercantile. So. And uh, can folks can folks order online? Yeah, we've got uh, direct ship uh, on uh, probably ninety percent of our products uh, nationwide. Uh, there are a lot of products also on the website for local delivery only. Uh, through the pandemic here, we are doing full orders and curbside. Uh, we do have uh, statewide delivery, which we do. Uh, uh, weekly as well. So we, we have wheels, we'll travel. <laughs> well, Drew, I really appreciate you being on the show. I think what y'all are doing down there is amazing. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the local, the local feel, the, the community aspect of, of what you've got going on there and the educational things and your human development, I think are all, um, obvious, um, uh, ingredients for an incredible organization. And I think that's what you have. Mm -hmm. I think y'all are doing a great job down there. So again, thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. And uh, well, thanks for having to, me. I hope to be down there wandering around looking at all the stuff pretty soon. Okay. We're here. Appreciate you, Max. Thank you. All right, folks. Well, thank you so much for being on the Galloping Goat Show. Uh, great time here. We've had with Andrew Burr, the Village Mercantile. Folks, if you've got needs, if you've got livestock, if you've got pets, if you've got do-it-yourself projects at home, Village Mercantile is a place to go. So until next time, go out and be the goat. Go down to the Village Mercantile and have a great day.